So it's nice to be here. Um, I call my, uh, my thing uh, lessons from the uh, chief comedy officer. Which is, this is what basically I've become. I never planned this, by the way. I was an engineer for many years, uh, known for our comedy. Engineers? Uh, I mean, thank you very much for laughing at that. I appreciate it. So what I'm going to do uh, is I've, I've prepared a lot of stuff. Uh, I, I, there certainly are serious points in here, but my goal really uh, aside from to inspire you to add humor to your talk, is to make you laugh, because laughing is a good thing. Uh, laughing is a good thing, and, and uh, before I get to that, I, I just want to cover what exactly an engineer comedian is. The only thing that makes me different than any other comic is I take the time to graph and chart my jokes. That's it. I, I, I look at the comedy world, I look at the world like an engineer. I look at data, I break it down, try to see some truths in it, and then I express it in an engineering type way. So this is what's going to happen if you're making microwave popcorn. There's the number of edible pieces on the y-axis. There's the time. You're at one minute, two minutes. It's very quiet in the microwave. No pieces have popped. Zero pieces. At some time above two minutes, you don't know where. All pieces are popped. All pieces are burnt. <laughs> Just that quickly, that's how it happens. The bag is on fire. The smoke alarm is blaring and your house stinks for a week. <laughs> and that very small window of actual edible popcorn uh, possibility, that is a .001 seconds. <laughs> Basic laughing is a lot like a lot of medicines. It reduces stress, it releases endorphins, it lowers blood pressure, it burns calories, and uh, you know, they always say laughter is the best medicine, and then I said to them, well, uh, technically, uh, I am actually a HMO, a humor maintenance organization at this point. <laughs> and there will be a $5 copay with each joke. <laughs> I think uh, one of the reasons I did the book was that I wanted to feel good about how, uh, what, what my contribution was, was really valued in some metric some way. I know everybody's into metrics. It's how do you measure the value of comedy? It turns out people have done studies. Uh, the more entertaining a workplace is, it turns out the happier customers are. That makes sense. You've been on a Southwest Airlines flight, those people are happy. I don't, I, you know, it's not the greatest. It's basically a bus, Southwest Airlines, but they're singing and they're joking, and I'm like, okay, that's not so bad. Uh, the other thing is the happier customers are, the more little they become, and the more they buy. Again, Southwest Airlines, it's a perfect example. Uh, this one am amazed me. Leaders with a good sense of humor, and I don't know how they measured sense of humor, but they did, actually earn more money. They, ac they actually did a study. There, there was a, um, I forget the name of the, uh, the company, but the, that was an actual result. So, so it's a measurable thing, uh, having a sense of humor. The most important thing I'm going to say this morning, uh, and uh, I've had this video online for forever, it's called Life After Death by PowerPoint. When you're talking like this, this may be a talk, but it's not just a talk, it's a show. You need to entertain as much as you need to just talk. This is what I hate. <laughs> Commonly called death by PowerPoint, if I could get rid of this in the world, I think I would have left an impact on mankind. I, bad PowerPoint drives me crazy. This is the number of PowerPoint presentations given per day in the world of business. Look at that. It is growing exponentially. In 2011, there were 88 million per day. There was only 69 million per day. I don't know how many they're going to be this year. They don't have the numbers in, but it's, it's growing exponentially. Then I found this chart. This is home floor closures per year, also growing exponentially. I realized PowerPoint caused the mortgage meltdown. People always ask me, well, what should I do? How do I make a good presentation? So I came up with a way, and basically it's, it's too simple. More images and fewer words. That's all. Just but don't put so many words on there. Images that are really cool and send a really clear message, uh, aren't too busy, just a really good, clear, clear picture, not so many words. And I came up with a way to actually uh, enlighten you or to illuminate how this is really obvious. And it's a little sketch I'm going to do. And in this sketch, I'm going to do uh, a thing that's actually happened now. I've had four people come up and they've told me they've actually done this. They've proposed to their spouse to be in PowerPoint. Yes, that's really happened. And all four times the uh, person said yes. Yeah, which is clearly a match made in heaven. I don't know if they answered with a PowerPoint. Well, my PowerPoint answer. But I'm going to do this two ways. Uh, I'm going to propose to my, my girlfriend, hopefully my wife, in PowerPoint, and I'm going to do it two different ways. You tell me which is more effective. Here's the way, uh, the way I would do it personally. Uh, you complete me, marry me. That's it. Two pictures, three words. That's how I would do it. Here's the more traditional way I think you'd find it in business. Okay, honey, let's look at our marriage analysis. Have a seat on the couch. I've set up a projector. Uh, let's just start with the pros. 
Uh, we're both of marriage age, so I think it's appropriate that we're talking about marriage at this point. We're compatibility, uh, compatible. We have two years of pre-marriage uh, testing, i.e. dating. We have experience. We have multiple previous serious relationships. We've been through this before. Uh, we have goal alignment, career, housing, uh, financials all seem to be in order. Uh, we have family approval. We've met each other's families. Uh, we're in, in love. I probably should have listed that first. <laughs> I, I'll fix that in Rev 2. <laughs> now let's move to the cons. Uh, I think uh, we need some improved communication skills. Uh, uh, you haven't prepared a PowerPoint. I'm a little disappointed. Uh, we have some expectation issues, uh, mostly on your part, I may add. And uh, third, we have some personal habit conflicts, which we've dealt uh, with, and I believe we have some workarounds. Uh, in conclusion, I think we should get married. Uh, questions? And I, you all know this, but I'm going to throw it in there as a disclaimer. Like, uh, like I have this fear that somebody's going to see, I saw this guy talk about humor, and he didn't mention these things not to do. So I'm going to throw these up here. D don't, I, I, I have comic friends who do corporate shows, and they, and they go, I told this joke you could tell in an 8 o'clock show on CBS, and, and they thought it was horribly offensive. And I'm like, that, those aren't the rules in corporate world. You can't, you can't do the stuff you see on TV. You, there's different rules. Uh, so, you know, you know, common sense, no off color, no dirty jokes, no bad words. Uh, I, I try to avoid ethnicity and gender and sexual orientation, disabilities, religion. Not a good idea anywhere, really, to make jokes about religion. Or uh, Don't talk about sex. Don't talk about ageism or age. Uh, any hot issues, you won't even talk any. I don't go anywhere. I'm far from the edge in the comedy world. Um, and personal lives and employees, don't get near. That's just, yeah, stay away from that. And you're thinking, well, what's left? There's a lot left, and that's what I'm going to talk about. There, if you look at sitcoms, sitcoms are based, it's situation comedy, that's what sitcom stands for. It's about putting characters in a situation and watch the comedy ensue. You look at an office place, it is, the office, the show The Office is a perfect example. It is filled with characters. And that's what I try to build my comedy off of, is the characters and the situations that happen in the office and in the workplace. And there, believe me, there's a bevy of comedy uh, possibilities. Uh, so th how these different groups interact is where I find a lot of the humor that, that I develop. And I saw this thing demoed uh, a couple years ago at, at IBM. It's a, it's a real-time speech translator. And when I first saw it, uh, I thought it was thing that, thing that the thing that Hora had. Remember that little communicator she had in her ear? This is a real thing now. I saw it demoed uh, at IBM in, in Watson Research Center in, in Upper State New York. And uh, the demo I saw, somebody speaking French, and had a real-time translation in English. And as they were speaking, I was hearing the real-time translation, and I saw it demoed in French and Spanish and German. And I immediately thought to the characters in my office, and I thought, you know what I'd really like? I'd really like a universal business translator. <laughs> right? So I can take, for example, if it's in sales to English mode, I can take what a salesperson says to me and tell me what it really means. See, that's a value for me in the office. So, for example, if I have the UBT in, in sales to English mode, and a salesperson says to me, that's a great question. That is a great question. Because that's normally how they'll say it. That's a great question. That really means, I have no idea what you just asked. <laughs> that is a great question. You are a smart guy. I want to get back to you on that one when I have a really good answer for you. It really means, I have no idea what you just asked. If a salesperson says to you, uh, it's easy to use, that translates to, uh, we don't offer any support. <laughs> if a salesperson says, uh, I spent two years working for myself, that translates to, uh, I was in prison. <laughs> now, how about engineer mode? I covered engineers, what an engineer says, and tell you what it really means. If an engineer says to you, did sales tell you that? Did sales tell you that? That really means, uh, it doesn't do that. That's... <laughs> that's uh, Did sales tell you that? That's not even actually possible. <laughs> uh, if an engineer says, uh, so far we're on schedule, that translates to, uh, we haven't started yet. <laughs> we're right where we expected to be. If an engineer says uh, that the feature is on the roadmap, that means uh, we'll probably never get to that. <laughs> that's on the roadmap, yes. Yeah. And if an engineer says uh, that's a new feature, that translates to, uh, that's a mistake we couldn't fix. That's, <laughs> No, that's a brand new feature. It's supposed to explode and burst into flames. We plan on that's the, uh, the running flaming stop. That's what we call that. And then finally, my favorite is the executive to English because uh, 
So often I'll hear an executive speak and I'll go, wow, that was really motivating. I feel great. And uh, what did they say? The people go, what did they say? And they go, I, I don't remember, but it was good. They're so good at, you know, never really committing, but motivating, you know, that's, and so I need an executive mode. So when an executive says to you, for example, that is a complex issue, that's a complex issue. That really means I have no idea what you do. That's a complex issue, uh, I'll get offline and we'll get back to you with an answer that that's really beyond the spoke, I'm, I, I have no idea what I'm saying. If an executive says we're looking, uh, we're working on a solution, rest assured we have the best interests of our customers in mind, that really means uh, I have no idea what we do. If an executive says, keep up the good work, it means I have no idea what we do. <laughs> and if an executive says, hello, it means I have no idea what we do. <laughs> so there's characters in your office, and, and every office has different characters. I uh, implore you to look around, and you, know, you might have uh, interesting HR people. HR people can be pretty interesting sometimes. Uh, but you know, there's, there's different characters at your work, and, and, and those characters are the stereotypes. Which actually, what, uh, I'm going to make a serious point here. Somebody said to me, is that really useful? I go, yes, because nobody wants to be that stereotypical salesperson or stereotypical engineer. We want to be better than that. So to make a joke out of the stereotype, it actually challenges us to be better. Another made a point. Um, what, the other thing I, uh, I, I, I want to say is when you have a celebration, like tonight I'm going to be performing at uh, the awards dinner tonight. And uh, oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> One person who wants to be back. <laughs> and, and I think it's great because I, uh, awards particularly, you look at the Oscars or the Emmys, they always have a comedian come out and do 10 or 15 minutes of comedy to warm up the crowd. You should be laughing. It's a celebration. You're celebrating awards. It should be. So when I, I do events, I always like to take the time to add humor to the celebration. And, and, and in fact, I'm going to celebrate something today. Uh, International Legal Technology Association, ILTA, was actually legally incorporated in 1985 as the Legal Users Group, is that what it is? L Lug? It was called Lug. Which is, that's a great name right there. Hey, are you a Lug? Yeah, how about you? I think it's a uh, legal, it's been through several names. It was LawNet when I uh, performed in like 2002. It's been through a bunch of names. Apparently the group was meeting before 1985, but they actually uh, incorporated uh, as Lug in 1985. So it's actually been, what is that, 27, 27 years. Uh, Legally incorporated. So let's take a moment to, to celebrate that. How, look at how much the world has changed in that 27 years. In 2012, that was a BlackBerry. When uh, ILTA was formed or, 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 or founded in 1985, that was a BlackBerry. <laughs> Anybody remember when it was a fruit? <laughs> kids today, kids going to college. We were talking about this. Kids go, going to college this year were born in 1994. They have no idea BlackBerry is a fruit. They think it's a company about to go out of business. Two thousand twelve. There's a child seat. What was a child seat when I was a kid in nineteen eighty five? That was a child seat. <laughs> Me and my sisters used to fight. Who's in the back window? Oh, I wanted. I wanted. My dad, who picked with lucky kid, who got to sit in the back window was. And yet we survived. Two thousand twelve. Uh, there's a tweet uh, from Britney Spears. And Britney Spears. Britney Spears. Britney Spears. In 1985, that was a tweet. <laughs> By the way, both have equal amount of usable content. <laughs> 2012, there's a Yahoo. In 1985, that was a Yahoo. <laughs> Nobody was socially networking with that guy. Uh, 2012, there's a, who doesn't have a cell phone? I, saw, I was driving down the road the other day, and I saw a guy on a payphone. First of all, how often do you see payphones? How often do you see people on a payphone? And my first thought was, uh, he must have lost his cell phone. <laughs> Why else would you use a payphone? And my son, who's, like I say, he's eight, he saw someone and I said, that's a payphone. People used to use it. He goes, they all use the same phone? That's disgusting. <laughs> and I went, you're right, it is. <laughs> Yet we never thought about it twice. Sure, I'll put this thing up. Everybody else has touched their face too. Ew, ew. So who doesn't have a cell phone? There's a cell phone in 2012. In 1985, that was a cell phone. <laughs> but I, I've noticed that when you go to a, an event, business, business, casual, and casual can really mean a lot of different things. There's no standard, really. It depends where you are in the country, what industry you're in. Uh, business, business, casual can be very different depending, you know, 
where you are, what you're doing, how big the company is, how big the group is. Uh, for example, I worked at IBM in, in, in the 80s. And IBM business standards in the 80s were very different. There's IBM business right there. There's IBM business casual, see the non-power tie. And then there's IBM casual, the non-white shirt. <laughs> that was IBM standards. Then you got, uh, in Texas, I just did a show in Texas, well, it was a couple years ago now, but it, um, I can't tell you the name of the company. I'll just say uh, they make instruments. <laughs> um, did, did I say too much? And in Texas, they have their own standards. There's business in Texas. There's business casual in Texas. And then there's a casual. And uh, <laughs> so you know how to get, take, take your hat off. Then engineers, we have our own standards. There's a casual. There's me on a casual uh, day, casual Friday there. There's business casual for an engineer. You see, I actually have socks on. It's kind of hard to tell. And then there's business. I have socks and clean underwear. Uh, <laughs> and then IT folks, I think uh, if you ask an IT person uh, to dress business casual, this is kind of how you hope they show up. Uh, you will never see an IT person uh, dressed like that. That's, that's a catalog of business casual. That, uh, frankly, it's a catalog IT people don't get. They don't get that catalog. <laughs> that's an IT person going to like a formal wedding. <laughs> that's as good as you will ever see an IT person dress. And, and this is probably real life. <laughs> and then there's actually preferred. I want to talk to you about, I, I always like to research the groups I'm talking to and, and uh, actually look at what they're doing and find some humor. That, one of the cool things about finding humor is sometimes it's right in front of you and you're so focused on what you do, which is what we want you to be, that you don't see the humor. Sometimes you've got to step back to see the jokes. Even this, I asked for some source material for comedy and they gave me the, uh, the uh, catalog for the conference, which is just chock full of jokes, by the way. I just, uh, <laughs> I laughed page after page of this baby and... Uh, I cannot wait for the movie. I think it's going to be great. <laughs> but I, I just want to read some of the session titles because I, uh, I find them, as, especially from an outsider, to be uh, humorous at best. And uh, um, this one, uh, Info 7, Play-Doh, Legos, and Law Firms. How young are you starting kids here? <laughs> that supported my point uh, excellently. The uh, number one acronym award goes to uh, KMPG6. AFAs plus LPM plus BPI equals opportunities for KM. I cannot solve that. <laughs> Here's one that's too challenging, Lex2. Managing the unmanageable in e-discovery. By definition, I'm not going to be able to do that, so why should I go? <laughs> I don't... It's unmanageable, why am I trying to manage it? <laughs> As you can see, uh, hopefully I've proved out, there's comedy right in front of you. I just read session titles and there was funny stuff in there. So what I hope to do now is, hopefully you're laughing this morning, but what about next week or the week after that? It's important to laugh every day. Like I said, laugh reduces stress and it's good for you. So how can I inject some comedy in your future? So I went through this book, went through the website, went through the mobile app, and I tried to pick out some words that you would use in, in what you do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach jokes to those words. So hopefully later on when you use those words, you'll think of my joke, and you'll be talking at a meeting or something, and you'll hear, hear the word, think of my joke, and go, ha, 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 So it's like injecting comedy into your future, little, little comedy humor, you know, time bombs I'm leaving into thing. And, and I call it uh, ILTA TRC, or uh, International Legal Technology Association Time Release Comedy. And again, it's all about words, and it's, it's a glossary term. I have a bunch of these. So to, a quick example of how this bit works. Voice recognition. Everybody knows what voice recognition is. To me, voice recognition is what you rely on after you've dialed the phone but forgot who you were calling. <laughs> is that not the dorkiest feeling in the world? Right? You're like, hello. Yeah, yeah could you talk some more, please? <laughs> By any chance, do you recognize my voice? You don't? Okay, I guess I never called then. <laughs> Bye-bye. Yilta. Yilta. That's uh, Paris Hilton trying to recite the alphabet. <laughs> C++. C++. I'm getting pretty nerdy now. C++. That's uh, the highest grade ever received by an engineer in an English class. <laughs> I squeaked by with a C++. 
ASCII, ASCII, that's uh, what you use to start your donkey. <laughs> Come on, that one's funny. Come on. That's a guaranteed laugh, I'm telling you. Next time you hear ASCII, you'll picture a donkey and a key, and you're, you're going to get a laugh. You're going to laugh. So I want to take a moment to talk about marketing folks, because, uh, well, here's how I feel about marketing folks. Any marketing folks in the room? Yeah, I'll be kind then. And by the way, uh, I've differentiated between marketing and sales, and here's why. Uh, marketing people know when they lie, uh, sales people don't. <laughs> That's the difference. Sales people just say, yeah, yeah, we can do that, no problem. It'll be there Friday, I guess. They have no idea. Yeah, no, really, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> marketing people, in my mind, and uh, the reason I'm doing this here is because so often now, especially with the internet, we quote statistics and, and data, and uh, what marketing people are great at, and I'm more talking about commercial marketing than product marketing, but commercial marketing, they take real statistics, which engineers, my people, love data. We love data, and they take it and they manipulate it and say exactly the opposite of what we intended or what, we might, what the data might actually be saying, and they just can manipulate it to make their point. And to show you how you do this, I worked up some actual examples. These are real facts, I am, but watch where I go with them. I'm not making these facts up. This is true. Around the world, 4,000 cans of soda are opened every second. That is true. Also true, 10 babies are conceived every second. So you could say if you were in marketing, every time you open a can, there's a 1 in 400 chance of getting pregnant. <laughs> so be careful when you have that second can of soda. <laughs> there are 1.4 billion people in China. It's true. A lot of people in China. There happen to be 7 billion people on Earth. So therefore, statistically, it cannot be argued, one out of every five babies born on Earth are Chinese. That is true. So you could say, if you were in marketing, if you've got four kids, you're expecting a fifth, it will be Chinese. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to review really quick. Uh, I really hope that I... I maybe inspired you to do a little bit of humor. I think it helps if you're leading a small group. If you're just making presentations, adding humor can help. Uh, bring humor to what you do. Bring humor to your organization. You need to entertain nowadays when you communicate, uh, when you're celebrating, celebrating ad laughter. Uh, one of the things I, I, I talked about was finding the characters in your office. That's a great place to find humor. Uh, look at the culture, the words you used. There's, believe me, it's chock full of humor in there. Uh, it can be used to spur creativity. You really, marketing people aren't the only people that can use humor to, to, uh, to make work more fun and, and, and improve your bottom line. Uh, encourage the people around you to be funny and always leave them laughing, which brings me to the last bit, which is... Now, finally, I'm going to end on some corporate math since uh, that's kind of been my message this morning. If you take engineers like myself, engineers, and you add in uh, social skills, you're immediately uh, moved into marketing. <laughs> that's what happens with people like me. I'm in marketing in no time. I can talk. You take marketing and you remove the truth, and well, now you're in sales. I covered that. <laughs> you take uh, sales and you remove the brain, and you bumped into management. <laughs> and you take management and you remove the sense of humor, and now you're in human resources. <laughs> so I'm doing this uh, bit, and I swear, uh, this guy in ph pharmaceutical industry, he's like, we're nothing like other salespeople. This is true. He's, he's like, oh, we're a completely different animal. Nothing like, you can't count us on And I said, you know, sir, you're right. Take pharmaceutical sales and you remove the suit, and you are a drug dealer. That's what you are. <laughs> That's it for me. I hope you had a good time today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ilta, for having me back. Have a great day. Thank you.